I just finished watching a video sent to me by Igor about uh, Tesla and how Tesla is going to change the world we live in uh, from not only electric cars but from rockets that go to Mars and bring back all kinds of rare earth, or not would, would be rare chemicals or minerals and the transportation of people through tubes and his, it, just amazing things that he says will be a part of our society within 10 years. And I'm going to do a video that, on that this week and share that information with you. But there's another thing that I'm very excited about. And I think that is some, something that's going to emerge out of the um, crisis that we're in right now. Our health care system is going to change from one of treatment and care to one of recognition and prevention of what we're going through right now. And that is going to be done by bringing technology into uh, the healthcare system. And that technology is going to be driven by a group of companies who already own technology. And when I'm speaking of technology, I'm speaking of the word data. Do you remember how much they use the word data in your evening recaps when they tell us about what's happening with the corona crisis. They want data. They need data. Well, who are the big gatherers of data? It, it is basically Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, Apple, and Facebook. They are the gatherers of data. They are the ones who develop the new technology. We've just been informed of a collaboration between uh, Apple and Google to create a new tracking application that will help us identify who has or who has had the virus and how they were exposed to us over the last 14 days. That is the first step in that direction. Now, is it possible to take data, and, and particularly when you integrate it with 5G, and predict and monitor the human body so as we know when a virus has infected a community. Is that possible? Well, I want to step back one step and remind you about the automobile you drive. I drive a 2016 uh, 535i BMW. That car puts about 560 gigabytes of data into the cloud every day. What is that data all about? The data is, first of all, about my driving habits. It is tracking how fast I drive in and if I adhere to the speed limit. It tr tracks if I am a heavy accelerator and a heavy breaker. What is that information for? Well, that information is to basically track how I use my vehicle and in the future will be used to track and determine how I pay for my insurance and how I am insured. And beyond that, it tells the, the data from my car tells the cloud everywhere that I have been and everywhere that I go and how long that do I stay there. It tells the cloud if my tire pressure is low. In fact, it tells me if my tire pressure is low and I can take care of it. It monitors how much gas I use and then tells me how many miles I have on the tank of gas that I have in the car at the time. In other words, it feeds me as well as feeds the cloud everything about my car. Now, it also then compares my data to every other 535i 2016 BMW in the world. That gives BMW an analysis of what's happening to our cars and can create preventive maintenance. Now, is that effective? Yeah, I remember when the lifetime of a car was roughly 50,000 miles. I fully expect to get somewhere between 150 and 200,000 miles out of my 2016 BMW 35i. So there is a major difference there. And what, and again, if you compare it to our, our medical field, it used to be the mechanics were people who solved problems. 
Today, the mechanics are maintain the vehicle so you don't have problems. Okay, now let's take that analogy and bring it to healthcare. Let's switch from the mechanic who listens to your heart and finds out if you, if you have a problem and you go to see him, if you're lucky, maybe once a year or maybe in my case twice a year and you get some analysis done. What if that can be done the same way it's done in an automobile and it's done on a daily basis and we move from care and, and maintenance of, of the human body to actually discovering what's going on in the human body, pushing it into the cloud, comparing it to every other human body, and then coming back with recommendations. I have done videos in the past about the smart bathroom, the smart toilet that that probes your stool, looks for blood, looks for pro watch uh, probes your your urine, the uh, toothbrush that analyzes your saliva, the uh, a device that pricks your finger and gives you a blood test, the smart watch, the smart scale, the smart mirror, so that my human body is being analyzed on a daily basis. That analysis is sent to the cloud compared with billions of other people's body activities and history and then comes back and tells me that day if I'm what the state of my health is. Now, why is this going to become important now? This technology has been there, but it hasn't been important. And there are some issues of privacy, and that is possibly what's holding it back. But that becomes a non-player now. It, it's just like when, when those two planes hit the Twin Towers on 9-11, it became important that I take my shoes off when I go into the airport. I take my belt off so that I can prove to everybody that's going to be on that plane with me that I am not a terrorist and I'm not there to bring the plane down and kill them. The same thing is going to have to happen relative to me getting on a plane relative to my health care. And it's going to be driven by this. This device will be my ticket to get onto the airplane. Now by ticket I mean part of my ticket price will be going to develop the technology that proves to the, air, the airlines that I am healthy and proves to everybody else on that plane that I am healthy so that they can take off and move me from here to wherever I want to go. Without this, the industry doesn't stand a chance. That is also true of the cruise industry. It is true of restaurants, it is true of the sporting industry. If we do not have the ability to tell our fellow citizens that we do not carry a communicable disease, we aren't going to be able to ever get back to the way we lived two months ago. So you may not want it. I have a friend, a very close friend, who doesn't own a smartphone. He refuses to. This will be his entrance pass if he ever cares to get on an airplane anymore, if he ever decides to go on a cruise anymore. It will be essential that we prove we are healthy before we go forward. This is going to pretty much become a priority in my way of thinking uh, in, in the next two years if it takes that long, because the reality is we aren't going to have a, um, a vaccine for probably a year to 18 months. So in the interim, what are we going to do to make the world feel safe? We can't allow this to happen again. We know what happens when the next virus comes. We know that the, the world's economy shut down. And we know that can't ever happen again. So if you want to be a part of the world economy, you're going to have to be a part of the system that protects the world economy. That'll be a decision that you make. If you want to live in the woods by yourself, hunt your food, grow your food, you'll be able to do that. And that will be your choice. But if you want to circulate within the community, 
and I mean by community, the world community, you're going to have to have a smart bathroom. You're going to have to have a operating, a voice-activated operating system, just as you have one in your car, in your home. And it will be the, the system that sends all of your health care information into the cloud and then comes back and gives you clearance to participate in our civilization. Is this going to happen soon? It has to. There's no, there's no if, it's, it's a question of when. Who are going to be the leaders in this? Well, if we go back to the five stocks that I entered at the beginning, I take that back, there are six of them. Google is, controls the Android phone, as Apple controls the Apple phone. These are two of the biggest gatherers of, inf of data in the world, particularly in the United States. They both also are involved in uh, quantum computing. Uh, Amazon is involved in quantum computing for, with its uh, Amazon Web Services. Microsoft is one of the leaders in artificial intelligence software. What is that? Well, when that data is put into the cloud, it has to be processed. It has to be sliced and diced and compared to every citizen in the world so that then the same kind of information can come back to me at, in my house through my phone to tell me that I'm okay, to tell you that I'm okay if you and I should cross paths. IBM has basically said that's where we're going. We're going to artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud, and quantum computing. And then Facebook, also a developer of software. I've also been sent some, some videos, again by Igor, about how most of these companies are not only striving to take care of us, but they're, they're making inroads into India. They're making inroads into Africa. I'm going to do a video where I share that. But I think the thing that just strikes me so hard right now is we are at a pivot point in our society, in our civilization. And for us to survive, we have to take advantage of the technology that right now is available at the rate of 560 gigabytes coming out of my car and duplicate that with 560 gigabytes or more per day coming out of my body and then comparing them to the 560 gigabytes out of your body so that we can live to see tomorrow.